Selling printables on Etsy is a great way to make money online working from home. With the demand for digital products rising like crazy within the last few years, the need for all kinds of printables has skyrocketed too. So if you're wanting a complete guide for how to create and sell Etsy printables online, then you're in the right place, friend, because that's exactly what we're going through in this video. I'm gonna walk you through each step of the process from start to finish, so let's dive in. Your first step here is to decide on the type of printable you wanna offer. There are so many different types of printables printable products available that you could choose from. You could offer products like printable wall art or posters, printable party or event resources, printable charts and planners, the list goes on. So you definitely want to niche down and get really specific here and decide on a specific type of printable you wanna start out offering. And after you decide that, you wanna research what styles are currently in demand. When I say styles, I'm thinking specifically of font types, color schemes, and types or styles of graphics you might wanna use in your designs. Some examples of different styles might be watercolor, kawaii, minimalist, boho, retro, or dreamy. Again, the options are pretty limitless with this, but you don't wanna just create what you like, you wanna create what's currently in demand and what you know is gonna sell really well and be something that lots of people are searching for on the platform you're selling on. So there are several different ways you can do this type of research, lots of different platforms you can look on, but some of my favorite places to conduct this type of market and product research is on Etsy itself by looking at what is selling when you type in a keyword phrase into the search that describes what you're thinking of selling, looking at the results that populate on the first and second page of search results because those are the best sellers and taking special notice of the ones with that little bestseller badge up in the corner of the thumbnail. I'll look through these bestsellers and see if I notice any repeating font styles or color schemes or just overall vibes and aesthetics in these products. I also love to use Pinterest as a resource for this. Pinterest has a lot of different websites you can look at, but some of the best ones are Pinterest predicts and Pinterest trends, which is gonna give you Pinterest predictions for what will be trending during this coming year year and what's currently being searched a lot on the Pinterest platform. Another great option for this type of research is by going to Creative Markets website and clicking on Design Trends. This will give you, again, what's currently trending in the graphic design world and what is currently really in demand for digital printable products. So that's all included in step one, deciding on your printable type that you wanna offer and then getting more specific with the type of style you wanna offer. So once you've got your research done and you've decided those two things, you're gonna move on to step number two, which is to actually create your design. There are several different graphic design tools out there that you could use for this, but one of my favorite and the one I'm gonna show you today is Kittle. Kittle's basically a one-stop shop design software that has all the different elements and tools you'll need to create the printable you want to offer. We're gonna jump in in just a minute and look at what all you can do on Kittle, but I wanna go ahead and let you know if you decide you want to try Kittle, I have the link in the description box below for you to try it out for free. And you can also sign up to use Kittle with my code HazeYT, and that'll give you 25% off of a Kittle Pro plan if you're a new user. Either way, there are tons of amazing things you can do on this platform. So let's go ahead and hop in and create a design. So here we are on Kittle, and the first thing we're going to do is click to create a new project. And this is where we're going to choose what size project we want to create. Kittle has some standard presets for different things, or you can input your your own custom width and height for this. Now it's really important to get this right, especially for printables, because different types of printables are going to require different sizes. You can do some research ahead of time when you know the type of printable you wanna offer by looking at similar listings on a platform like Etsy to see what other sellers are offering. And quick side note here, if you're interested in offering printable wall art, you may need to offer a bundle with several different files in different sizes because you never know what size someone may want to print out and use their wall art in. There are different aspect ratios that all of the different printable sizes fall into. So what a lot of sellers do is offer a bundle with one file for each ratio. This means you might include the same wall art as a two to three file, a three to four file, and so on. Now, if you're not sure about ratios and sizing, I have a digital product starter guide linked in the description box below. It's a completely free guide that you can download that'll give you all the information you need as far as what are the most commonly used ratios, which sizes are included under each ratio, and everything you'll need to know to get started with printables. So definitely click the link below to grab that free guide if you feel like that could be useful for you. So for our demo today, I'm gonna be creating a piece of printable wall art, and I'm gonna start with this poster big preset size, which is a 24 inch by 36 inch. Keeping in mind that for things like printable wall art, it's easier to offer bigger sizes and let the customer size down or scale down than it would be for me to offer them a small size and have them scale up, which might result in some quality loss in their file. So I'm gonna select this size, and then before I click create, I can also come over here and select the DPI I want. DPI stands for dots per inch, and this is telling me what resolution this file is going to be created in. This is the quality of the image, and the higher the DPI, the better the quality, the higher the resolution, and the less likely
likely that my printable file is going to end up looking pixelated or grainy once it's printed out. The industry standard DPI for printables is a minimum of 300. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put 300 as my DPI. I'm gonna stick with a vertical orientation here and click create. So here's my project. I have actually zoomed out a little bit so I can see it from further back. And this is my artboard number one. But one thing that Kittle just introduced recently that I'm loving is their infinite canvas feature. So this is where you can add multiple artboards and work with them inside the same project. So let's say I wanted to have another one. I could come up here to the artboard tool and then click and drag to create a new artboard here. I can make this custom size and I can come up here to change it to one of the preset sizes or just stick with my custom size. And I can even title it up here what I might want it to say. So this way I can continue adding different artboards and work with them all inside the same project instead of having to open up a new project. But for this demo, I'm just gonna stick with our first artboard here and we're gonna create some flower art to be printed out as a poster for printable wall art. So if I come over here to the left side, I can see the menu of different options I have and I'm gonna start by looking at the templates here. Kittle has templates that you can use if you're not wanting to start from scratch in all different types of niches and themes and you can also do a search up here. So if I change this to, let's say I wanna search for a poster template and I know I want it to be a flower theme, I can search that and I see here all of these different amazing flower templates that I could start with. Now, of course, if I'm wanting to sell this as my own product, I'm not going to want to just start with one of these templates and not edit it at all and then try to sell it as is. That would definitely not be the best idea here, but I can start with one of these and change things around to make it my own. Editing things like the text, the colors, even adding different images in. The sky is really the limit here. Now, if I didn't want to use a template, I could start from scratch and I could even upload my own image to work with. So here, if I want to do that, I can come to uploads and I can just click here to upload a photo or a graphic element that I want to use and bring into Kittle. And I can start with that or I can use elements within Kittle, which we'll get to in just a minute. Let's come down to the next tab, which is text. This is one of my favorite areas on Kittle because there's so many options. Under the text tab, Kittle gives lots of different preset text options. So I can simply click to add this to my project and then edit it from there with this menu on the right hand side where I can change the colors, the font and all of the different effects. I have one category that I love, which is this gradient category. So you've got your preset gradient text here and then you can come over to text color again changing out the different colors you want showing in the gradient and even changing out the direction of the gradient and its opacity. But if you didn't want to start with one of these text presets you could create your own by just clicking to add some text typing in what you want and then using all of the different options here on the right for things like color, font, and these transformation options down here, which allow you to do things like put it at an angle, a wave, an arch shape, or even a custom shape. What I love about these different transformation options is you can click on the little dots to drag and change the shape that your text is in to make it more of a customized shape. I can even do a circle and change how big or small the circle is that the text is wrapped around. I can also come over here to the effects tab and have options for shading and decoration. So shading is gonna add a shadow behind my text. There are different options for what type of shadow, how strong the shadow is, and even the color of the shadow. And then down here is one of my absolute favorite sections. This is the decoration section. So here I can do things like add a color cut effect, oblique lines, horizontal lines, or even a fading color cut. I'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it better. With the fading color cut, I can change the weight of where the lines are, the distance of the lines, and what colors are included here. So let's say I like that for my art print. So that's gonna be my text. And then let's say I wanna add some elements to this. I want this to be some flower wall art. So I'm gonna come over here to the elements tab and I can search by these tabs at the top for shapes, ornaments, illustrations, abstract designs, which you can see just have so many different cool things like splatters. Like I could do a paint splatter here and change the color of that. I could do a grunge image like this. So many wonderful graphic elements I can use here or I can search for what I want. So I might want to type in flowers. And here I've got a whole collection of different flower elements I could use in my design. So I'm going to add this one to my wall art. And of course I can size this the way I want and continue editing this element by changing the color. When I come over to color, I can now see the document colors. So these are pulling the different colors from my text. So I can easily match that with the text if I'd like and continue editing that. Now just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to remove this because I want to show you this next section, which is the image section. This is going to give me 
photos. So I can look for a photo I want. Let's say I type in flower again, and I can see all the different results of the actual photographic images I could use in my design. Now, a couple different tools really take this to the next level. So let's add, let's say this photograph of this beautiful stem here. Now this does have a background because it's a photographic image. So it's not gonna be completely white. This is a different color background, but I can click on it and then use Kittle's AI background remover to instantly remove that background and just be left with the subject of the image. So here I've got the background removed and then I can use this with a transparent background. Another option I love here is the image vectorizer. So if I have my photo selected and I click on image vectorizer, I can select the number of colors I want in this image. Let's say I want three and then I hit vectorize image and there it's turned my photograph into an actual vectorized image. You can see how it looks different. It's turned this into a graphic element with three different colors and just gives it a really cool look if I don't want it to look exactly like a photograph. Now I can also come on the image tab over to Kittle AI images and this will show me some different images that have been produced by Kittle's AI. If I find one I like, I can click on this little eye symbol and that'll give me the actual prompt that was used with the Kittle's AI to produce this image as well as the style that was used. So I'm gonna show you this tool in just a minute, but we can see for this fox, it was a cartoon style that was used and the prompt just says a fox. For this running coffee cup, we've got the style as mascot and the prompt was a running cup of coffee. So I can click to use these AI images or I can generate my own, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. Now this next tab over here says textures. This is one of my absolute favorite features on Kittle because you can add different textures and backgrounds in a variety of styles. So I can choose a grunge texture, a paper texture, a pattern texture. Let's just say I'm wanting one of these grunge textures. Let's say I like this one. I'm gonna add it to my design and there I can see it in the background, which I can then edit further and make part of my design. I can also come over here to backgrounds and see all different types of backgrounds I can use. So for instance, I've got this abstract watercolor image section that I can click and add that as my background. You can see over here, it pulls up more editing options and I can just continue to edit this, maybe changing the opacity so it's a little more see-through. There's just so many different types of things I can do with this. Now next, we're gonna come here where it says Kittle AI and we're gonna use Kittle AI's image generator to actually come up with something I have in mind that I just wasn't quite able to find either in the elements or the images section or on a different website to bring into Kittle. I can use this AI tool to describe what I'm wanting. I can also choose the style I want it in. So let's say I'm wanting a vector style. I could choose from all of these different really cool ones from vector art to vintage drawing to line art. There's just lots of great options here. So let's say I'm wanting to create a vintage drawing of a flower. I'm just gonna type in a lily flower. I'm gonna choose my aspect ratio that I want and then click to generate. And here it is. It's generated for me a lily in that vintage style that I chose. So I can go ahead and add this to my design or if I'm not really happy with it, I can generate again. I can change the prompt a little bit or the style. But once I'm happy with the image that's been generated, I can also edit further by coming over here, changing the color, the opacity, adding a shadow or whatever I'd like to do with this. All right, so let's say I'm finished with this and I'm ready to download the final file that I'm going to sell. I'm gonna come up here to download. Now I can select to just download one artboard, but if I had multiple by using that infinite canvas feature, I would see the different artboards here and I could select to download them all or just one at a time. And then I can choose the file type I wanna download this out. So again, this is where you're gonna do a little bit of research ahead of time by looking at similar listings on a platform like Etsy to see what other sellers are listing their similar printables as because it depends on what type of printable you're offering that's gonna determine which file type you're gonna choose here. For wall art, I'm probably gonna choose either a PNG or a JPEG. And then again, I can change the width and height and even the DPI here if I want before downloading. So once I've got all my settings down, I can also choose to remove a background and then I'm gonna click download. Now, one other thing I wanna use Kittle for before I move on to the next step is to actually create some mock-up images because I'm gonna need these mock-up images for my listing when I get ready to sell this. So if I click here on mock-up, this will take me to Kittle's mock-up section where they have mock-up images for all different types of products. So I can maybe search for poster and then select the one I like. So once I select the mock-up image, it's automatically going to add my design to this and I can resize this to fit inside the mock-up image the way I'd like it to. Having a mock-up image like this that shows your design being used in real life gives an idea of what it could actually be in the buyer's life, which is gonna help your listing convert from a view into a sale. There are all different types of mock-up images, so you can use the ones that are here inside Kittle, or you can also purchase mock-up images like these on a platform like Etsy or Creative Market and download those images and then bring them into Kittle to work with as an upload. Once you're happy with your mock-up image, you're gonna click here to download 
download your mockup and that's the image you're going to use when you create your listing. All right, now that you've got your final files completed for your actual deliverable file for your printable and your mockup images, you're going to move on to step number three, which is to create your Etsy listing. So here we are on Etsy. I've clicked to create a new listing and you'll want to select digital file for this because it's going to be a digital printable file. And you're going to want to just go through and answer these questions. So who made it? What is it? A finished product? When did you make it? So here you have the option for made to order, or you can select the year that it was made. So if it's an instant download, it's something that you don't need to edit any further on your end. You'll want to select the year that it was made. Otherwise, if you select made to order, it's going to change some of those fields in your listing that are not going to be applicable for an instant download. So most printables are going to be instant downloads. So you're going to select the year and then it'll bring you here where you can continue inputting all the different fields to add to create your listing. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to go through all these different fields, but I am going to point out two that are the most important here. This first one is your photos and video section. This is where you're going to click to upload your different images, like the mock-up images that we created. You can also have a video here if you'd like. So I'm going to select the mock-up images I want to upload, and this is going to be part of my listing. So I can see my mock-up image here and I have 10 slots for different photos. So hopefully I've got different mock-ups showing it from different angles and maybe even some text graphics that give some important information here. Then if I scroll down, I see digital files. So this is the section where I'm actually going to click to upload that final art files. This is not where the mock-up goes. This is the section for the actual deliverable files. I can add up to five files. So if I have different ones that I'm selling as a bundle, I can add those individually here. Or if I've got more than five, I can always create a zip folder and upload that zip folder here that contains all of the files within that folder. Then of course, I want to go through and complete the rest of these fields, like the title, the description, the tag section. And one thing you do want to think about when you're completing sections like the description is your SEO, which stands for search engine optimization. I don't have time in this video to do a deep dive into Etsy SEO, but this is basically using keyword phrases that are going to optimize your listing to be shown and ranked high in the search results. So if you're interested in finding out some of those SEO tips and tricks, then I do have a whole video on Etsy SEO. I'll link that in the description box as well. All right, you've got your printables created, you've published your Etsy listing, and now it's time for step number four, which is to market your shop. Now, a lot of people skip over this step because they think once they publish their Etsy listing, it's just automatically going to be pushed to everyone on the platform and they're going to start making sales. Not saying this isn't possible, but it's highly unlikely that if you don't do any marketing that your shop will be discovered. It is up to you in the beginning, especially when you're just starting out on Etsy to do some proactive promotion and marketing on external channels to drive traffic to your shop to really get that momentum going. You want to market and promote anywhere and everywhere that you can, sharing about your shop, sharing about your products, and continuing pointing people back to go shop in your Etsy store. Some of my favorite forms of digital marketing are doing social media promotions, using email marketing, and even collaborating with other sellers or influencers. There's so many different ways that you can do this. You can really get creative, offer incentives and discounts that'll give potential buyers a reason to make that purchase now instead of waiting. So think of what platforms outside of Etsy you could promote your shop on and really spread the word that you're open for business. So there you go, friend. If you're interested in starting to create printables, definitely definitely click that link below to try out Kittle for free. And if you're interested in getting the pro plan on Kittle, remember you can use that code HAZEYT. That'll give you 25% off your first month on the pro plan as a new user. And remember to also click the link in the description box below to grab your free digital product starter guide. It's going to get you started with your digital products and give you all the information you need to know on different file types, aspect ratios, sizing. It's all there. Happy selling friends.